students my name is Rajpan Hindi assistant professor at Assam Downtown University today i am here to discuss with you all about the historical development of public health so before moving forward let's first see what is public health so public health may be conceptualized as analyzing the health of a population and the threats it faces is the basis of public health science of protecting the safety and improving the health of communities through education policy making and research for disease and injury prevention the comprehensive definition of public health which was put forwarded by the charles edward amory winslow states that public health is the science and the art of preventing disease prolonging life and promoting health and efficiency through organized community efforts for the sanitation of the environment the control of communicable infections the education of the individuals in personal hygiene the organization of medical and nursing services for the early diagnosis and preventive treatment of disease and the development of social machinery to ensure everyone a uh, standard of living adequate for maintenance of health so organizing this benefits as to enable every students to realize his birth right of health and longevity the rise of public health the rise of public health can be seen in the 19th century in the era of the unplanned industrialization in the 19th century the great sanitary awakening happened that is the identification of filth as both a cause of disease and a vehicle of transmission and ensuring the embrace of cleanliness was an important component of the 19th century social reforms and advancement in the public health in the 19th century illness became to be seen as an indicator of poor social and environmental conditions as well as poor moral and spiritual conditions cleanliness was embraced as a path both to the physical and the moral health disease control shifted from reacting to intermittent outbreaks to continuing measures for prevention with sanitation public health became a societal goal and protecting health became a public activity the development of public activities in health edwin edwin chadwick a lawyer a london lawyer is one of the most recognized names in the sanitary reform movement under chadwick authority a commission conducted studies of life and health of london working classes in 1830 and that of the entire country in the year 1842 the report of the studies named general report on the sanitary conditions was documented of the appalling conditions in which masses of the working people were compelled to live and die in the industrial towns and rural areas of uk chatwick documented that average age at that for the janitory was 36 years for the tradesmen tradesmen it was 22 years and for the laborers only 16 years to remedy this situation chatwick proposed what came to be known as the sanitary idea his remedy was based on the assumption that diseases are caused by foul by the dirty air from the decomposition of waste to remove disease therefore it was necessary to build a drainage network to remove sewage and wastage further chadwick proposed that a national board of health 
local boards in each district and the district medical officers to be appointed in order to accomplish this goal. Chadwick's report eventually was adopted in the Public Health Act 1848 in UK and subsequently American Public Health Act 1872 which both promoted sanitation and engineering as a means of controlling disease. So now we will talk, we will discuss about the public health ethics. So the public health ethics consists of the beneficence, non-maleficence, autonomy, social justice and truth telling. So beneficence refers to the actions or the rules aimed at benefiting others while the concept of non-maleficence non is embodied by the phrase first do no harm or the latin word primum no nocere. Non-maleficence requires an intention to avoid needless harm or injury that can arise through acts of commission or omission. In common language, it can be considered as negligence. If you impose a careless or a unreasonable risk of harm upon another. The principle of autonomy gives the rights of an individual to self-determination. This rooted in the society's respect for individual's ability to make informed decisions about personal matter with freedom. Social justice is a concept of fair and just relations between the individual and society. Social justice assigns rights and duties in the institutions of society which enables people to receive the basis, basic benefits and cooperation. Truth-telling or veracity can be defined as the avoidance of lying, deception, misrepresentation and non-disclosure in interactions with patients or relevant to patient care. Now we have come to the disease control phase. So this phase was from the year 1880 to the year 1920. In this phase, the sanitary legislation and the sanitary reform movement took place. Although there was less technical knowledge available during this time, there was the aim of the phase was to uh, was aimed at the control of man's physical environment, such as water supply, sewage disposal and not at the control of any specific disease. Improvement in the health of the people due to disease and death control can be seen during this phase. Now then comes the health promotional model phase. Sorry, This phase is from the year 1920 to the year 1960. In addition to the disease control activities, one more goal was added to public health that is health promotion of the individuals. It was initiated as personal health services such as introduction of mother and child health services, school health services, industrial health services, mental health and rehabilitation services. Through two great movements were initiated for human development during this phase. The first one is the provision of the basic health services through the medium of primary health care centers and sub centers and the other is the community development program to promote village development through active participation of the whole community. Then come the social engineering phase. This phase was from the year 1960 to the year 1980. During this phase, there, uh, there can be seen a change in the pattern of disease. The public health entered in a new phase called the social engineering phase. This phase moved forward towards preventive and rehabilitative 
aspects of chronic disease and behavioral problems. The health for all phase. This phase was from the year 1981 to the year 2000. The health gap between the rich and the poor within and between the countries was minimized. In, in this phase included provisions of health care to all by reducing the inequalities with, within and between the population so that the individual will lead a socially and economically productive life. Then comes the modern public health. With the adoption of the health for all in the year 1978, a new concept of public health became evident worldwide worldwide which may be defined as the organized application of local state national and international resources to achieve health for all that is attainment by other by all the people of the world by the year 2000 of a level of health that will permit them to lead a socially and economically productive life during the 20th century, the dramatic increase in the average lifespan of uh, average lifespan is credited to public health achievements such as, as vaccination programs, control of infectious disease, better safety policies such as motor vehicle and worker safety, improved family planning, emphasis on safe drinking water. Now the focus has been shifted towards the chronic disease such as cancer, AIDS, diabetes, and heart, heart diseases. In conclusion, I'd like to say is that the public health is a dynamic field of medicine that is concerned primarily with improving the health of population rather than just the health of the individuals. With this, come to an end to my presentation. Thank you.